good comrades. The military, well, there's a lot more pride in the military today than there was maybe 20 years ago. It's good to see. You know, our flag flies proud. We're all raised and we're all one poor chip. We're in a three section march. Eight to twelve, twelve to four, and four and four to six. Brand new clock, seven days a week. Hard work. Well, God bless you. And we'll see, we'll enjoy the day. We're gonna see the memorial and then uh, we'll shoot some more video and you'll get a copy of this too. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting. Thank you. We're here with Frank on the bus, Navy man, dry water sailor, my kind of guy. Frank, how'd you get into the Navy? Did you enlist after Pearl Harbor? Uh, yeah, well, I didn't get in until 1944. Okay. Uh, I wanted to go in sooner, but my brother wouldn't have signed for Yeah, how old were you? I was 18. I traveled two hours to get in. Wow. Yeah. If you were an hour earlier, you would have had a different career at sea. That's right. Well, we were told that that flat top, as soon as it got out in Pacific, yep. in a war zone, so, wow. supposedly all the hands were Wow. You were meant to be here, my friend. Yes, sir. And we're, and we're going to see the memorial, and I understand you've seen it originally when they first erected it? Yes. Yeah. You were invited? Yeah, well, we were on a bus trip. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we stopped there to see it, along with the rest of the Yeah. So today will be good. You'll have more time to, to review it and look at it with some comrades. Very much so. Yeah. But, uh, 
Well, you were there to serve and protect, and you helped your country, and we really respect and appreciate that commitment. And you are the greatest generation, Frank. You and I talked about it earlier, and, and we will pass this down and never let future generations forget just what you guys were made of. Thank you. I am within two years after Pearl Harbor. Okay. When I took all my tests for Air Force while I was still in high school as a sophomore, wow. I passed them all, but they wouldn't take me because I was too young. And when I was 18, one day later, they got me. Wow. And that was two years after Pearl Harbor. Yeah. And then I, was in, it was the Air Corps at that time, not the Air Force, and we gave the Air Force in 47. Interesting. In 19, so consequently, instead of going right into the Air Force, they, it was the Army Air Corps, okay. and I was sent to Fort Myers, Florida for infantry training, and so I had <laughs> infantry training. Three, uh, nine, three months, six months, oh, three months, uh, and then uh, into the Air Force, and they sent me to Gettysburg College and grabbed two years of college in my head in six months' time. Then I went on to pilot training and became a B-17, and uh, I then was sent to Germany. Uh, I had B-29 training as well, but Truman allowed the bomb to be dropped and we scratched it. I was going to Denver to get a new B-29, because they were just making them. That, that turned out to be the biggest ship, but the B-17 used to be the biggest one. It had four engines and no jets. Wow. I lost 85% of my hearing, so I have a 38 mission Germany. <laughs> Bobby Bishop, I was grounded and uh, sent back, but I had to finish out the four years of Air Force, because of 47, and, but uh, anyway, I had to go to Air Force. Well, so when I was getting my discharge after the four years, and I was a captain at that time, and an old colonel was standing over there watching this guy walk out, and he called me over. He says, Phillips, we want you to re-enlist. I said, sir, I was a captain at that time. He said, sir, I don't want to go behind the desk in a typewriter. I know how to type. I had it in high school. But I want something else. He says, well, I don't know where the hell you're going to end up, but we're going to have your ass back here six months from now fighting Russia. That's the truth. So, when I, went, I got a job with a company out of Chicago to send me to Corpus Christi, Texas. Now I'm actually from West Virginia. I spent nine years in that job. But while I got to Corpus Christi, I looked around and there was no Air Force Reserve. So I looked around and I heard about the 36th Division of the Texas National Guard who had one heck of a fighting record in Germany. And I went out to see him and they talked me into joining. Wow. And I'll tell you what, I was a captain of that. And I was, but there were many, many times. So they treated me, those guys were tough as hell, but they treated me like I walked on water. And, uh, and I, there were times when I would have rather have been an enlisted man with them than a group of officer with the other guys. But anyway, I spent nine years with them. And this missed the Korean Vietnam War. So anyway, uh, I have a total of 13 years of military service. And uh, I, I spent nine years with them. And I had a tremendous amount of but my infantry training really, really came in handy because in the early part of the war, there were all these classes and things, but all these instructors were brand new also, and, and they did too. My, my now, the B-17 has a 10-man crew, including the 
gunners. And I noticed right away my gunners were missing the airplane. Every time they shot, they, they didn't get nothing. Because the Germans would be beating us, the fighters would be to shoot us down. And so I saw what they were doing. Well, I had had training whenever you were firing at an airplane, you fired and let the airplane run into the bullets. And so I got my guys down and I gave them the instructions and then they started knocking them down. Interesting, interesting. Good stuff. Okay. What uh, What did you do after the war and after you got out of the military? What? After I got out of the well, I, I was... <laughs> I, in Corpus Christi, I, see, I had, when I, they sent me to Gettysburg, that was two years of college crammed in my hands in six months' time. Because you had to have two years of college before you could be a pilot or in the Air Force. So anyway, in Corpus Christi, I went to school at nighttime in Texas University, had a branch down there. And I, Got my other two years, and, 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 business, and then I, began, I got a, an offer of a job with a financial management company out of Minneapolis, and I became a financial planner and stockbroker for 49 years, and I only had three jobs in my lifetime. That's great. That's great. Well, Captain John Phillips, certainly an interesting story and a pleasure. And we really do honor your service, and you guys were the greatest generation. Well, thank you, and I'm real proud. You know what the thing is? I feel so damn I'll soon be 50, soon be 90 years old. God bless you. And, uh, All right, here we are. John, if you wouldn't mind, give us a little background. Uh, when did you first join the military, the Army? I joined it in 43. Uh, I went into the Army, exactly, yep. and I stayed in for two years. Uh, my, big, my biggest battle for it was the, in the Egyptian uh, here. We I I was wanting to go home right away, but I didn't have enough points. <laughs> yeah. Back in Anybody for water? He wanted to give some of them away. <laughs> they wouldn't let him do that, right? No. Hello, hello, hello. It won't be long now that we'll be coming yeah, into where the uh, monument I mean, I've is. enjoyed it. Remember, if anybody wants I'm to get a snack or something before they I've, leave, I've left some uh, buddies two bags there. back there with different but, kinds of snacks uh, in it. And then after we uh, leave the life. monument area, we can I have grab a, some I have a grandson now at the Naval Academy. Uh, wow, that's wonderful in Annapolis. Two years. He's, he's got two years to go. It tickled me to death. Uh, yeah, a little, back little second Sorry, lieutenant. Anybody else need water? Yeah, you're a good tall man. Yeah. He's six, six, wow. Good, handsome, strapping young oh, man. Yeah. Young lieutenant. Yeah. The girls will be chasing him, I'm sure. <laughs> well, John, all I can say is my dad served on the patent in the uh, European campaign, oh, Battle yeah, of the Bulge. And truly, you and him and these guys on the bus are the greatest generation. And, and we'll never forget it. And I'm making sure that my kids and everybody we talk to remembers what you did. And, you, and we're going to get you a copy of the video from today, and it'll be a nice memory, too, of the trip. Yeah. Thank you. we got to put you in equal time, you know. So, Dick, if you wouldn't mind telling us, you entered the Marines right after the war, you signed up? Yeah, I was 17 when I went in, uh, and I, that was July 4th, 1945. And I was, they were throwing grenades when the war ended. Wow. And then uh, I was in the Marines about, over, about a year and a half, and I was taking a guard battalion to the main Navy building in New A little later on, I joined the Navy, and I did some Navy guards in my 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be getting to the memorial here probably in about 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> that, I don't know. Like that, 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 one group nah, hey, listen, you did a great job. We appreciate your service, and, and, and you are the greatest generation, no question about it. And he's a Long Island guy, so that's good, too. Thank you, Dick. It's good. All right, we're running. We're cooking. So give us some thoughts. I mean, you entered the military. You just got photobombed. You you entered the military right at the war when okay. They gave me about a week. I said the Wow. They waited a week So then Paris Island boot camp? Which back in the day was a pretty tough place. Yeah. Fast moving. Yeah. That's where they get ready for all the campaigns and all. They got everybody overseas they could get. So you didn't spend long. But I mean, every minute of it was hard work. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. And then you went into uh, uh, infantry training at in Camp of June. That yep. was just as hard work as they treated the Marines back yeah. then. Yeah, but you graduated at that point. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, so what would you rank? What, what? I got an open hour. Right now. Susan fighting the dog. Yep. I got 